It said everyone has a story. China has almost 1.4 billion of them. From the mega cities to the vast countryside, from the ancient modern, it's our job to bring these stories to you, direct from one of the most rapidly changing nations on the planet. I'm Laura Schmidt, and we're rediscovering China. Today we're exploring marriage pressure. I feel like I'm a shopping. I feel like now the hair is already saying "打折." Its causes, its consequences, and how China singletons are fighting back. Go on a shopping trip on a Saturday afternoon in downtown Beijing, and you might find something unexpected on offer. 报名吗？这是？可以现场报名。现场报名吗？The young men and women are making their way to a restricted area in the heart of the building. The details of the latest arrivals flash across a big screen, and the DJ is warming up the turntables. Then there's salsa. Welcome to speed dating, Chinese style. If you ever needed proof that what China does, it does big, just take a look at this speed dating activity. Over 200 singletons are estimated to show up today and take a shot at finding true love and finding it fast. But this really hasn't been what I expected of a speed dating session. There's been a lot of dancing, a lot of loud music, and a lot of bright lights. Not really the perfect environment to chat and meet new people. But that doesn't seem to have deterred our eager participants. They are part of the latest wave of singledom. There are currently over 200 million single people of marriageable age in China. That's virtually equivalent to the populations of the UK, Germany, and France put together. This has created a marriage economy, a feature of which is huge speed dating activities like this. In Beijing alone, the organizer. A dating website holds hundreds of these events every year. Chinese 呃，当然，大家就是参加这种活动的人，大多数都比较内向，所以说这种活动也比较不好搞。In a society where a third of young women admit they prefer watching TV drama series to socializing, and two-thirds of young men confess they'd rather stay at home surfing the internet, the chances of meeting Mr. or Miss Wright are obviously limited. And even when they make the effort, full-on physical contact with a total stranger can feel a bit awkward. What these speed dating events set out to do is make people come out of their shell and see if there's a spark. 大家都在说，现在单身女女生年纪大也没什么，不结婚也没什么，但其实内心还是会着急。而且就是有时候突然想到，我过完年二十七岁了，就是不是我不想找，是我真的找不到合适的呀。但毕竟大家都不想一个人过啊。因为这二十多年了，连女生手都没牵过，特别特别着急。然后我爸我妈也每次都催我，他们都说过年的时候找不到女朋友就别回来了。In China, traditionally the cutoff line for what is considered marriageable age is 25 for men and 23 for women, but times are changing and so-called late marriages are becoming the norm. At the same time, the pressure to seal the deal is growing. Young Chinese are becoming increasingly anxious about being left over. We were very early, six years ago. I think when I first started in this field, it was mostly the middle-aged age. 
二十七八岁、二十八九岁就觉得很年轻了，但是现在不一样了。现在我们可能有二十二三岁的女孩子，在学校的女孩子还有过来找要找女男朋友，就是年龄越来越低龄化。Zhang Pengkun is a professional matchmaker with the largest dating website in China. She serves its VIP clients. While professional matchmaking is hardly a new concept in China, through the internet it has experienced a revival as services are moving online. The dating website Miss Zhang works for claims to have around 200 million users. I have a friend who has been following me for a long time. I will call him a phone call. Hello, you are Zhang Xiaoshan, right? 哎，你好，我是百合网的顾问张鹏坤，呃，然后其实有一些您具体的这个情况，我还想多跟您聊聊，可以吗？因为我看您是三十八岁，一米七六的身高，然后是在美国留学回来，呃，目前啊、呃、是一个单身的状态哈，有过婚姻经历吗？嗯。This kind of one-on-one -on -one dating advice is not cheap. The fees start at around 1,500 US dollars and can run up to over 7,000. Her clients do not want to reveal their identity, as being single is still considered a sensitive topic in China. And so it's only through talking to Ms. Zhang that we can get an insight into their dating wants and needs. 女孩子希望男人，呃，有责任心，然后最好是事业上有一点小成就。那男人呢，往往都是这样，就是哎，我看中的首先是年轻漂亮，然后相处之后是性格脾气。好，今天要接待的两位会员，男士已经到了。就是这么休闲装就过来了是吧？<笑>好，来咱们这边来。男生坐这边吧啊，一会儿女孩子有包啊什么的，就放在这边舒服一点啊。然后可能会比较热，脱了外套啊。嗯，我看看整理一下，帅不帅？喝点什么呀？咖啡还是水？水就行。行嘞，那等一下啊。好，哎，亲爱的，来了。<笑>怎么样？路上还堵车吗？还行，还可以哈。啊，那个小李啊，已经到了。啊啊。哎，亲爱的，<笑>快过来，两个人认识一下。这是小刘，然后这是李先生，<笑>两个人认识一下，握个手吧。<笑>已经很长时间就期待这次见面了。那你们俩聊聊啊，然后我先过去。行,<笑>行嘞，好。女孩子更为迫切。啊，他们觉得，比如说我见了几个人之后，还是不可以，那我再去，你快一点，快一点给我介绍，啊，那男人一般可能会没有那么急迫了，他会觉得说，哦，那好，没有遇到合适的，没关系，我现在三十五岁，我四十五岁的时候可以照样的找女朋友。This rush to get married, especially for China's women, is not a new phenomenon. In fact, it has a long history. 那中国很多人都会说，呃，不孝有三哈，无后为大。那么呢，一到了一定特定的年龄，你还没有结婚，还没有要结婚要孩子，那这件事情本身而言，就是父母会觉得面子上过不去。另外呢，还有就是孩子也会觉得，那我孝顺父母啊，我应该是首先要满足他们的心愿，包括也会有这样，就是到您这儿来，我能不能不去考虑结婚？啊，但是你是为了就是让我的父母知道我在做这件事情，啊，也会有这样的情况。In the face of this immense pressure to bring home a partner, particularly over Chinese New Year, young Chinese have become incredibly creative in how to appease their parents. One option is to rent a fake boy or girlfriend online. So let's take a look how that works. This website's name translates as rentafriend.com. Their banner says their members offer services including traveling and meeting parents. There's even the possibility of a fake marriage. Users have profiles similar to social media sites and can upload photos, so potential partners can get a good look. Upon registering, I get asked a few rather personal questions, including my height, weight and body shape. I'm not inclined to be entirely truthful. 
Signing up is simple enough. Now all I need to do is pick a person to pose as my boyfriend and get in touch. But what do their services actually include? So on one of the biggest forums in the Chinese web, we've discovered this post by a male person who offers their services as a fake boyfriend for Chinese New Year. So as you can see, it's a really detailed post and services range from going shopping with you for around three US dollars per hour to watching a movie at just over one US dollar per hour. He'll also go and see your parents, a little bit more expensive, at just over seven US dollars per hour. And then there is the possibility of getting physical. So you can have a regular kiss for just under one US dollar, fairly inexpensive, or French kissing for just over one US dollar. And then, from what we can tell, there are also more intimate services on offer. So whether this is a fake boyfriend or something else is entirely up to you. While we can't verify how serious that post was, this one seemingly is. We decide to get in touch with the young man advertising himself. He replies within minutes. As I pretend to be a Chinese girl facing marriage pressure, it occurs to me that you never really know who is on the other side of that screen. Is this really a good solution? I wouldn't say it's, it's, it's probably it's a changing society. So for the old generation, they have very formulaic uh, type of life, what is good and what is bad, but not the case for the new generation. So therefore, there's, been a extreme, there's a, quite a lot of conflicts. Okay. Ah, we'll continue. In 2013, Professor Wong published a book on the economics of love and marriage. He is skeptical of the renter boyfriend business. I'm not entirely sure I really like that. But if you think that the old generation cannot change and there's no way to communicate, well, why not, right? I mean, it makes life a lot easier for everyone. Uh, makes people a lot happier for everyone. So, but however, I think that uh, if I would like to say is maybe it is a good thing to uh, to try to get the, your parents to understand the problem rather than pretending the problem does not exist. Renting a fake partner is a relatively new concept. A majority of young Chinese still choose to deal with their parents nagging head on. Fei Wei is one of them. She is from Zhejiang province and works in Shanghai. She has a good degree and a good job. In her free time, she teaches floristry. But none of her achievements seemed to matter the day she turned 25.我过了二十五岁之后，我妈只要跟我打电话，嗯，说任何事情，她最后可能绕绕绕绕，都会绕到这个啊，为什么还没有找男朋友啊？嗯，最近有什么最新情况啊？想要跟大家在一起聊天，
就我现在每次回去，我朋友说你去干嘛了，我都说嗯，我跟父母斗智斗勇去了，因为回家的话就可能就变成了全面战争了，就不止我要应付我爸妈，可能还有我爷爷奶奶、外公外婆，那还有我很多亲戚。Fei Wei's mother is a small town primary school teacher. Her colleagues and friends frequently ask about her daughter and whether she's still single. So she's merely passing on to her daughter the pressure she faces herself. Fei Fei is still very young. Why are you so worried about her getting married as soon as possible? This is Daniel Yan and his girlfriend Wei Tang. Daniel returned to China after completing his studies in the UK and now manages a book cafe in Nanjing. He's 26. He and his girlfriend have been dating for half, and now they've decided it's time to tie the knot. A lot of people say, I think, yeah, Western, I think, I, I think too. I mean, one man can wait. The girls on the other side is just uh, not, not, not like that. So my stress mostly comes from my, my girlfriends. While for China's women, it's the prospect of aging and an idea that this makes them less valuable that creates marriage pressure. For China's men, it's mostly a financial headache. My girlfriend and her family are quite uh, traditional, you know, like a traditional Chinese family. They, they, they wish that the wedding could be like huge or, you know, just like face stuff, right? Like, uh, don't just, they just don't want to lose face. Uh, so they, they're kind of wishing the, the wedding should be like, um, yeah, like uh, amazing. For Daniel, at the moment, marriage pressure translates into financial pressure. Even though the couple have tried to minimize the cost, they are still looking at a cost of over 20,000 US dollars for their wedding. In Chinese culture, it is the norm for the groom's family to pay for the wedding. But Daniel earns less than a thousand US dollars per month, and his father he won't pitch in. But Daniel's future in-laws still think it's his responsibility as groom to pay. Nowhere is the pressure on young people to marry more visible than at the marriage market in Shanghai's People's Park. Here we see the extreme lengths parents are willing to go to in order to escape the embarrassment of an unmarried child. We're here at People's Square where once again hundreds of people have come to the market. But it's not just any kind of market. There are no properties or items on offer here, but rather actual people. Sons and daughters who are single and whose parents are desperately trying to match them up with the highest bidder. The tension in the air is tangible. Height, age, income, education, household registration. A life's achievements summed up on a sheet of A4 paper pinned to an umbrella. Except the people on offer may not even know they're being advertised like this. And by their parents too, who hide from the cameras for fear of being exposed.
You look at the uh, Renmin Gongyuan in uh, Shanghai, the successor rate uh, is remarkably low. And uh, because I think that China has changed way too much. So it is very difficult for them to understand what, what their children actually like. So uh, I think that the successor rate is going to be very, very low. What is the um, effect of this marriage pressure on the economy, in your opinion? Well, uh, I think the more the pressure actually coming from uh, too many single men rather than single women, especially you, you can see that uh, housing prices uh, being one of the chief results of uh, such kind of pressure for men to be able to find a good wife. One of my colleagues have done uh, uh, research in this and find out that this actually has been rather significant effect in pushing up uh, housing prices. Some people offer a slightly different take on who is affected more by marriage pressure, men or women. One of them is Joy Chen. She wrote a book advising young women in China not to marry before reaching 30. In this, she was encouraging them to fly in the face of the stigma of being a leftover woman, a term coined by the Chinese media almost a decade ago. From a demographic standpoint, the leftover woman label is completely inaccurate. There are many more leftover men in society than there are leftover women. Um, yet, this stigma persists. It starts to make women desperate. I mean, I've had women who tell me they're 20 and they're leftover, right? So women start to get very desperate as they near age 30 and say, if I don't marry, marry the next guy who comes along, if I don't grab him and trap him, then um, it may be too late. But that, argues Ms. Chen, is a potentially disaster. In her book, she encourages young women to first focus on becoming the person they want to be, to build a career, and most importantly, to wait for the right guy to come along. A marriage sealed in haste, she warns, won't end well. I've seen studies that say that in Beijing and Shanghai, for people under age 30, um, who get married, the divorce rate is 60%. So I think it also comes back to a fundamental question about security. You know, I think that that question really goes to the heart of this question of marriage and a basic assumption that marriage will bring you entering again. In fact, for the majority of young women in some of these big cities, marriage will lead to the exact opposite, which is divorce. An upsurge in divorces resulted from the so-called first wave of singledom in China's cities. In the 1950s, the country's first marriage law finally enabled women to file for divorce. The 1970s saw a second wave after educated young men and women sent to the countryside from the city under a government policy were allowed to return home. In many cases, they left behind a spouse in the provinces. Then, in the 90s, China's opening up and reform led to a third wave as people questioned traditional family values. This latest wave was kicked off by rapid economic development and the increased independence of Chinese women. Okay, 那比方说有人陪你去玩呢如果有一个你很喜欢一起去度假的人跟你去度假你开不开心呢很开心啊然后你刚好在这个很开心的事情时候也认识了不同的朋友对吧这个是坏事吗不是坏事啊那这个有这
Well, then it depends on what you mean by the economy, right? E- economics is about maximizing what we call the happiness or utility of human beings, and and、uh, as a liberal economist,、uh, my belief is that、uh, do whatever that pleases you most, probably maximizes the happiness of the society more. In 2001, The Economist magazine highlighted the importance of single women to an economy. As more of China's women are choosing to stay single and becoming increasingly independent, they consume more, spend more, and thereby contribute more to the economy.、Uh, if there are a lot more single women, we probably should have more services、uh, catering for these single women, because single women actually. Uh, are some of the highest spenders in the society. They are willing to travel. They are very willing to explore different things.、Uh, they、uh, they are more likely to dine out, and they are more likely to、uh, try what we call experience tourism, meaning so meaning tours that provide you with experiences rather than just、uh, go here, take a photo, and then come back. But for the increasing numbers of young Chinese who stay single by choice, there is still a major problem to face. How do they deal with their parents? And one group of people is trying to get parents to rethink their stance. They're the anti-marriage pressure union. They first caught the public eye with an advert posted in the Beijing underground during the Chinese New Year of 2016. The ad quickly gained a huge following. Its creator is 31-year-old Chen Yingying. 在就是去年年底的时候，就在某一次线下聚会的时候，这个春节又要来了，然后又要回家了。这个就是我们那些未婚的小伙伴，然后就开始在说，这个亲戚又要催了，然后父母又要逼了。就这个时候，忽然间有个小伙伴，他忽然间就是灵机一闪，那有没有这个可能性，就是我们来出钱来去做一个能够反映年轻人心声的反逼婚的广告呢 ？The advert addressed the parents directly, telling them not to worry, singles can lead a happy life too. It cost over 5,400 U.S. dollars. The funds were raised by the group themselves, as well as through an online crowdfunding campaign. Actually, we, ma, 当时做这个广告，我们也知道，就是我们财力有限，就是，呃，能做的就那么点。但是呢，我们想，我，我们不应该就是起止于一个广告。像父母，他可能。呃，那个春节回家，他又逼婚了。然后子女他这个时候就可以说啊，您知道吗？就是最近在东直门有一个广告，怎么样，怎么样，怎么样的。他们就可以就这个话题，然后来交流双方的想法了。就是一个交流的过程。The ad is a small attempt to narrow the generational gap that has been the main source of marriage pressure. We've witnessed how hard some young people are trying to escape it. The fact is, Chinese youngsters are marrying later. Now, the main issue is getting their parents to embrace their choice. Actually, I don't like when people use "single" and "unmarried" to judge a person. Oh, I'm not single. 单身其实是我自己选择的一个权利，呃，我并不觉得像大家说的，我现在这个年纪单身，我有多么的可怜，我有很多事情要自己做。我觉得如果我选择单身，你也不需要同情我。那当然，这也不是一件值得骄傲的事情，并没有因为觉得我单身，然后我自己独立，我的生活过得很好，特别骄傲。我觉得这就是一个普通的状态。Sorry， 刚才没开机。<笑>然后他的这个作者跟我真是没有缘分，他所有的作品通通不见了。